friends and welcome to part one of constructing a corset. Before we get started, there are a couple bits of vital information that we need to go over before we get started. First, I speak pretty slow in these videos. That's because I get very mellow when I start sewing, and also I wanted to make sure that everybody could understand what I was saying, because this is such a technical garment to make. However, if I'm speaking way too slow for you, feel free to hit that playback speed button in the settings option of the video. That way you can speed it up and hear all the information much faster. Second, if you made your pattern following the drafting video I made previous to this, then you'll be sewing your seams with a half inch seam allowance. However, if you bought your pattern and are following this video, then you need to follow whatever seam allowance they mark on that pattern. Third, while there are many different ways to construct a corset, in this video we will be making a two layer style sandwich method corset, meaning we need to cut four of every pattern piece. Fourth, I will be using a lock stitch to sew every seam. A lock stitch is where you sew a normal running stitch, making sure to back stitch at the top and bottom of the seam. Then you go over it again with a slightly tighter, smaller stitch length, back stitching again at the top and bottom. This makes sure it is a very tight seam and we are not going to pop any seams due to the tension of the garment. Fourth, you'll see that I'm being very meticulous about ironing to get my fabric as flat as possible. That is because any little wrinkle can set the measurements off on our corset. And lastly, you'll see that I don't use a lot of pins. In fact, I usually prefer not to use pins, especially when cutting, because when you put a pin through the fabric, that can cause little wrinkles in the pattern piece and cause the measurements to get off, and every little millimeter counts in this instance. Therefore, if you can, use as few pins as possible or use pattern weights and a rotary cutter to get an exact cut. So with all that said, let's get started. All right, so let me give you a quick overview of what I'm doing. So here I have my pattern pieces and I have taken a notch out at the waist. This straight line is the actual waist marking, whereas this notch out is just to allow us room. So we can go in with our chalk um, pen or pencil or whatever you're using and just mark your waistline because you want everything to line up at that point. And this is the guide to how to sew without pins. If you can get your waistlines to match up, everything else should match up just fine. From there, I take out my pins and I mark the pattern number, so two. I don't worry about doing an arrow because as long as I can tell which direction the number goes, then I know which way is up. And we're needing four of each pattern piece. So previously I marked A and B, so this is gonna be C, and then two D. Hopefully you can see that. This tells me exactly where things, or exactly which panel is which, and how they need to connect together. And then lastly, you put the pattern piece back on again, making sure it lines up perfectly. You want to be very exact when you are making corsets because every little centimeter and millimeter counts. And lastly, mark your waist again and your pattern piece is ready to go. Alright, so from here I have pinned everything at the waist, making sure the marks line up. You should have four separate pieces. So this will be the outside inside and then I think outside, inside. But now we need to just go along and sew all of these up. All right, so when you are sewing these, you want, of course, the needle that is appropriate for the material you're using. So you want something like a denim needle um, or a thick universal needle. You also want to be using just an all-purpose thread um, in the color that you uh, in the color of your fabric um, and then make sure you get a good brand I'm using dual duty um, you can also use Coach and Clark but you really want to make sure you get a good reliable brand that's not gonna snap on you and so you're gonna sew everything once on uh, about a three stitch length 
and then you're gonna lock stitch it by going back and stitching everything again at a shorter stitch length. So I'll do the three stitch length first and then I'll go back and show you how to lock stitch. I'm going to go back and turn the dial up to do about a two. And then I'm just going to sew it again right over top what I just did. Now we have that seam. It has been lock stitched, meaning it's been stitched down twice. And we're just gonna repeat that for every panel on all four pieces. So let's go. All right, so now that we have our panels completely sewn up, we need to go in and clip the curves. So first we're going to clip right at the waistline. So where you marked, just like we cut in our pattern, you want to cut straight on the waistline just before your stitch line, and then cut a little triangle to the side. And do that for every waistline marking. except for the fronts. You don't need to do it on the front or the back because those are gonna be straight lines. So now we have our waistlines all cut. Now we need to go in and clip the curves on our hips and any other curves so that when we go to press it, the seams will lay flat. So I just like to take little triangle snips out so it looks something like that. Again, wherever we have a curve, take some little triangles out. Be sure not to clip into the threads. Cut about an eighth of an inch away. And especially on the waist here, you really want that to lay nice and flat, so I take a couple extra. And that looks pretty good. So there's the hip to the waist. Again, we have the hip to the waist and all of our waistlines are marked. So now let's go iron and press this out. Now, of course you will want your iron and though not totally necessary, you can do it without it, but pressing out the curves is so much easier when you have a tailor's ham. So I have my tailor's ham here and I have my pieces. Remember you wanna set your iron to a cotton setting, the hottest one, because we're using um, only cotton materials. Turn it on, let it get hot. Like I said, you can press out your seams without a tailor's ham. You just have to be very meticulous. So, there you go, I like to get a little damp go at it. I like to really use the tip to get in there and press all my seams flat. Get it as smooth as possible and that's going to make it look the best. Here we have our first curve. So I'm going to set it on the Taylor's ham like so. Give it a spritz. Really press it out. So wherever we have these little snips, you can see it's laying down much nicer. Right like so. Beautiful. You can see here we have some pretty nice pressed seams. I like to go back one more time, ignore all the lint. <laughs> I like to go back one more time on the front and really just give it one last good press, make sure it's getting nice and flat. There we go, we have our seams all nice and pressed out and we're just gonna repeat the clipping of the curves and ironing it out for all the pieces. So I will do that and I will be right back. 
All right, so now that our corset is all pressed out, we will need to add a waist tape. So you wanna grab what will be the inside of your corset, both left and right side. And you want some grow grain or twill tape ribbon. Um, I prefer grow grain. It's just um, what I've used the most and I really like it and I can get it pretty cheap. So this is, what size is this? This is a 7 8 wide ribbon. So I'll show you on one side. We have our panels here and we have our waistline marked. So here, 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 and over here. And we want to place this waist tape, as we call it, right on the top edge of our line. And we want it to be very taut, so I like to give just a little bit excess on the ends. So if here is my marking, and this is the top of the corset that goes along your torso, then you're gonna put it right there and place a pin. Now you wanna get this very, very taut so you can pull your fabric a little. My waistline marking's right there. Here's my other waistline marking. I know because of the way I cut it. I'm gonna stretch it just a teeny bit to make sure it's nice and taut. And I'm gonna lay it right on that line and put a pin right there. So now it's nice and taut. Basically what a waist tape does is it keeps the waist of your garment from stretching and keeps it pulled in. So since we so meticulously made our garment to a certain waist that is smaller than our actual waist measurement, we want to make sure that it's not going to stretch due to the tension of our body pushing against it. So this waist tape is a solid piece that does not have any cuts or seams and so it's going to be able to take all the tension and keep our waist from stretching. So grab more pins and again bring it over to your next waistline. I know for me that waistline is right here at this notch. So pull it over, place it down, make sure it's very tight. And pop it in, right like that. All right, so now we have our left and right side done up with the waist tape. So now we're gonna go back to our machine and we're gonna stitch down uh, the waist tape. You're not gonna do it horizontally because that will put tension and it can snap the threads. So we're going to do it vertically. Um, if you want it very clean, you can flip over and stitch in the ditch of the seam, but this is just a, a workhorse daily corset for me. So I'm just going to go on each side of the seam along the seam allowance and you just go up and down back and forth a couple times so I will do that real quick and I will bring it back and show you all right so I am finished with stitching in the waist tape you can see here I just went up and down like three or four times along each side and because it's all in black you can't see it too well I mean it's right there but this is also gonna be on the inside and it's just for me, so I am not worried about it. Now that that is done, we need to connect our fronts. So you're gonna grab your other two panels, two pieces that you sewed, and you're going to match them up. So this is panel one, so I know it needs to go over top like that. And it's going to create a sandwich. Inside you have your inner panel, with your waist tape and then your outer panel that will be seen. So you need to stitch up your back panel first. In this case, it is this panel. So you're going to put right sides together so that all our seams face outward. 
and stitch along the back. And lastly, we want to make sure we press our grommet panel open. Get nice and flat. And then just like before, flip it inside out, or right side out I mean. Really nice and flat. Then lastly, because this is our grommet panel and we need to create this loop into one solid panel, you're going to fold that seam you just did in half and I, oops, and iron it down. So get it good and flat. Make sure that the seam is even. You don't get one side poking out too much versus the other side. You really just want to roll it with your fingers until you get it even. Right like that. And press it down. We get a very clean seam. And this is going to be our grommet panel. So our, we're going to have a bone right here and grommets there. If you are going to do a zipper busk, then go watch my zipper tutorial now. If you are going to do a regular busk, then continue on to the next video where we will insert our busk. I hope you guys found this information useful. If you did, be sure to share it with your friends. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. Remember, cosplay is all about having fun. I love you guys, and I will see you next week. Bye!